Welcome to God's story in the stars. The zodiac or circle of animals begins with Virgo, the only non-animal constellation in the set of 12, and it ends with Leo, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Uh, the ancients knew where the zodiac began and ended because at the beginning of the seasons, at the spring equinox, the sphinx, um, a figure in ancient Egypt, the head of the woman points to Virgo and the tail points to Leo. So all the ancients knew where the zodiac was meant to begin and end. It, it's been perverted and twisted into the modern science, pseudoscience of astrology that, that counterfeits God's truth. Now, the brightest star in Virgo is Alpha Virginis, which means the one born of the Virgin. And in her hand, the maiden holds a, a grain of wheat, uh, which contains a star, which means the seed. And in the other hand, she holds a branch, which refers to the branch of Jesse, who was Jesus Christ. The virgin birth of Jesus Christ was prophesied at the beginning of time in Isaiah 7:14. So the ancient symbol for Virgo contains the fish, the Christian fish, as a part of it. Now this is the three wise men following the star. This is not a part of the zodiac, but it's a, an important part of the story. This painting was done by my grandson, a six-year-old, with my help, and I wanted him in it because his name is Sterling, which means little star. Um, the three wise men were astronomers and astrologers, they knew what the star meant, they were waiting for it, and when it came, they followed it for about two years until they found uh, the Christ child. It was the planet Jupiter transiting. The, the NASA technology has confirmed now that the star the wise men followed was the planet Jupiter. In the ancient times, the planets were called the kings, and Jupiter being the largest was the king of kings and a protector of the, the galaxy. Its force field has um, averted many collisions with celestial bodies that could have come and destroyed the Earth. So the planet Jupiter was transiting and because of its retrograde motion it appeared to hover over Bethlehem. Um, Jupiter aligned with Regulus, which is Latin for the little king, which is the brightest star in Leo the lion. And it aligned with Leo during, during the Jewish Feast of Trumpets, when Israel was waiting for a king to be declared. This was in 3 BC, but it was an erroneous dating system. It should have been 0 BC, the year he was born. But it aligned to declare the birth of Jesus Christ. The sun was in Virgo with the moon under her feet, as it says in Revelations 12, 1 to 5. And this only happened for 80 minutes on the 11th of September, 3 BC, but really not BC. <laughs> this has been determined by NASA technology, which can now view the sky over anywhere in the world at any time in history. The universe aligned to declare the birth of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. This beautiful painting by Angela Ebnetta is of Libra. It is about the scales of judgment and justice. On one hand, we have the um, sin. Uh, the star is Zubin el Janubi, the price which is deficient, meaning mankind has been weighed in the balance and found lacking. And a star on the other side of the scales, Zubin el Shemali, is the price that covers. Here we see the sacrificial lamb and the crown of glory. And on this side we see the snake and skull, that's sin and death. So our Saviour paid the price to balance the scales of judgment for us, weighed out in his own blood. This one is Scorpio, painted by Raphael Pessu and it's about the Redeemer's conflict. You can see the scorpion in the background there and Jesus on the cross here. 
It is the third sign in the first book of four of the constellations. So the zodiac, the 12 signs are divided into three books. The first book is about the Redeemer, the first four signs. The second book of four signs is about the redeemed, that's us. And the third book is about the Redeemer coming again. So the brightest star in this one is serpents, which means the serpent assaulting the heel of man. Orphicus is another bright star, means the man grasping the serpent. And Hercules is the mighty man victorious. So this is Sagittarius now, which means the arrow of God sent forth. This one here is a, a little hand drawing. Uh, and this one is a digital print. Both of these were done by my daughter, Angelina Ritchie Smith, who lives in the UK. And she sent them over to be part of this exhibition. This one is an oil painting by a young fellow named Jai Gelch, who lives in Melbourne, of Sagittarius. So we've got three different versions of Sagittarius. It speaks of the Redeemer's triumph. It is the last of the four signs in the first book of the zodiac constellations. The main stars are Lyra, praise prepared for the conqueror, Ara, fire prepared for his enemies, and Draco, the dragon cast down. This is Capricorn, another one by my daughter Angelina Ritchie Smith. She has salt on it, which makes it very interesting and frosty. Capricorn is the first sign in the second book of the astrological signs. It speaks of the redeemed, the result of the redeemer's suffering. It rep it's represented by a half goat, half fish creature. The goat's head is bowed, denoting death, a sacrifice for the atonement of sin. But hope is represented in new life in the fish's tail. The brightest stars in the constellation of Capricorn are Sagitta, the arrow of God sent forth, Aquila, the smitten one falling, and Delphinus, the dead one rising again. This particular painting is the arrow of God sent forth. This is Aquarius, painted by Anna Day. Aquarius is the picture of eternal life. Aquarius appears in the summer sky in the northern hemisphere when water is precious and the water pair bearer pours water out into the mouth of the fish. Fish and people are associated throughout the Bible. In John 4.14, 4, Jesus says, Whoever drinks the water I give will never thirst. It will become a spring welling up to eternal life. Pisces, painted by Heather Murphy, is the picture of salvation, the story of salvation. Uh, Jesus said, I am the Alpha and Omega, I'm the beginning and the end, and I am the bright morning star. Uh, Venus is the morning star and the evening star, it's the first star you see at night and the last to fade in the morning. Well, Venus hovered in the constellation of Pisces for 40 days from when Jesus died to when he ascended, and as it left, it it showed a picture of breaking the chains that bind the fish. Main stars in the constellation are the band, the great enemy Cetus, Andromeda, the redeemed in bondage, and Cepheus, the deliverer coming to loosen. Aries, painted by Angela Ebnetta, is the glorious lamb redeemer the fruit of his work and mediation, the body of people spiritually born to him through faith. Aries represents glory out of humiliation. The brightest star is El Nath, which means authority, God or judge. Nath means broken or cut in pieces or poured out. This is my body which is broken for you, 1 Corinthians 11:24. This is an adult ram with horns defeating the sea monster of death and hell. The golden fleece represents the body of the resurrected saviour after he'd been sacrificed, which shines with brilliant light. The ram's forefoot is stretched out over the cords that bind the fish, Pisces, to Cetus the beast. The ram is said to be the 
claiming the fish or cutting their bonds which attach them to the beast. And this one of Aries is another digital print by my daughter Angelina Ritchie Smith from the UK. So the brightest stars in the Aries constellation are Cassiopeia, the captive delivered, Cetus, the great enemy bound, and Perseus, the breaker delivering. Taurus the bull, that both of these paintings are of Taurus and they're done by Virginia Field. This one is inspired by the Lascaux cave paintings in Dordogne in southern France. They're about 20,000 years old and there's a cave painting with the, with the star, the constellation of Taurus up in the roof of the cave. And this one is a, um, an abstract of Taurus looking up at Taurus moving in the sky. It's got a red spot, it's already sold. It had a thousand dollar price tag on it. And in Taurus, it is a picture of the judge that is coming. The rushing bull rushes in to take, take possession of the night sky. The Pleiades group is with, within the sign of Taurus. Aldebaran in this constellation is one of the brightest stars in the sky. It's 425 times brighter than the sun. Um, this is part of Cancer. I don't have a painting of the constellation as such, but my granddaughter, a 10 year old Piper Howard, did this with my help and it is Ursa Minor and Major which is the little bear or the lesser sheepfold and Ursa Major is the great bear or the fold and the flock. And another star in this group is Argo, the pilgrim's arrival at home. The crab shell speaks of protection and I wanted some children in this exhibition and my other granddaughter Rohani Senaratna has painted Jesus praying in the garden of Gethsemane because Jesus said let the children come unto me and you have to be like a little child to enter the kingdom of God whoever welcomes one of these little children welcomes me and the one who sent me that's Mark 9 3 7 Gemini painted by Rod McCormack this is a modern abstract with resin surface. It's the second sign in the third book of four signs of the 12 zodiac constellations. Main stars in this group are Lepus, the enemy trodden underfoot, Canis Major, the coming glorious prince, and Canis Minor, the exalted redeemer. Gemini represents a twofold nature of Jesus Christ. He was full, fully God and fully man and it also speaks of the two comings of the Messiah. This is Leo, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, painted by myself. It's about the Messiah's consummated triumph. Leo represents the Lord Jesus Christ, King of heaven and earth. The brightest star in this constellation, Regulus, on the lion's breast next to his heart, is Latin for the little king. Leo is about the Messiah's consummated triumph. Other bright stars in the decans, they're the associated groups of stars with each sign. Each sign has three decans with it, so there are actually 48 signs altogether. And they're really similar in all the ancient cultures, in the Persian, the Jewish, the Chinese, the Indian. They're very similar, um, 48 signs. So other bright stars in the decans tell more of the story. They are Hydra, the old serpent destroyed, Crater, the cup of wrath poured out, and Corvus, the bird of prey, birds of prey devouring. This is a picture of Jesus as the returning king when the enemy is destroyed. Okay, this is the cross by Pamela, the cross of Hubble by Pamela Genyon, and it's inspired by the furthest out photograph ever sent back from outer space from the Hubble telescopes. You can go to the edge of the universe and God's already there with the answer. I think that if you're born again under the sign of the cross and you are influenced by the worldly zodiac symbols then all of them are superseded by the cross. The Southern Cross painted by yours truly again. 
um, tells the story of, it, of Jesus sacrificed on the cross, the pointer stars, the law, uh, the law and the prophets, and they point to a coming Messiah from the beginning of time. Now the Southern Cross used to be visible in the Northern Hemisphere 5,000 years ago. It would have been visible on the horizon when Jesus was crucified and because of the precession of the equinoxes it's now slipped below the horizon and it's visible to us in the Southern Hemisphere. The top cross means the crown of thorns. The, the cross here in the side is crucis epsilon or epsilon crucis means it is finished and that denotes the spear in the side when they plunged the spear into Jesus only water came out which is what happens when someone is dead there's no blood it's just the water so it is finished I hope you've enjoyed this little tour of the the 12 zodiac signs and the cross at the end uh, and I hope it'll give you a new insight into the stars and God's story yeah, so if this is the first time you've seen the stars in this light, maybe you'd like to look into it a bit further and Google the gospel in the stars and see what comes up. But yeah, it's time for the church to take back territory that's been stolen and perverted and have, let the real story be told. God's story is written in the sky, the history of the world.